meteorologist Mark Mulner with special tropical bulletin coverage here on Hurricane Florence, a catastrophic hurricane. Let's get right into the particulars. Category 4 continuing towards the northwest northwest here towards the Carolinas. If you are in the path of the system, it's time to get out immediately. Outer Banks of North Carolina, you should already be out. Hurricane warnings are already in effect. The system will likely obtain Category 5 strength as it goes into an area that's much more conducive for development. No wind shear, much higher sea surface temperatures along the Gulf Stream here, and an atmosphere that is pretty much high pressure aloft primed here for any tropical system. So ventilation for the system will be optimal in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So if you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, or even inland, even if you're in parts of my forecast area in Pennsylvania and New York State, you're gonna to wanna to continue to watch this system because this system could potentially and will likely cause major inland freshwater flooding on the order of 15 to 25 inches, locally higher in the 30 to 35 inch range. Catastrophic hurricane here will likely obtain category five strength. Would not be surprised here if the system goes as high as 165, 175 mile per hour winds. Now, once it reaches the coastline, what remains to be seen whether it will maintain a category five strength, likely will come in as a very strong category four. But nevertheless, the difference is very minuscule at this point, being that it's the system is such a very large system. Let's get right into the model particulars. We're looking at a very interesting development that happened with the Euro today. And it's similar to the GFS, only the Euro has it happening a bit further south. GFS does a little bit of a loop continuing here off of the outer banks of North Carolina. And it brings it up just east of scrapes the outer banks and does a loop off the coast retrogrades to the southwest here along the Gulf Stream picking up further energy and strength and then brings it inland as a very strong hurricane near Wilmington, North Carolina. The Euro does something very similar only it does it just south of the outer banks brings it in just to the southern part of the outer banks and then retrogrades it southwestward along the coastline here and brings it into the South Carolina area. If any of these two scenarios, whether it be the GFS or the Euro does happen, it will be much worse than just coming in at a straight angle and plowing into the coast and then heading inland. Because once we have any of these loops develop or retrograding or hugging the coastline and then moving inland, it just prolongs the misery and the agony here along the coastline and will have tremendous damage along a much larger stretch of the coastline here. So there are some models, some of the hurricane models just taking it straight inland here. My track kind of compromises between the two and brings it in a little bit at an angle installs it a little bit but nevertheless these models are a bit troubling to say the least and th for those of you inland of North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia and even into Maryland, Pennsylvania and New York State people in my forecast area you'll want to stay tuned especially in the Susquehanna River Valley if this system some of these models like the GFS and some of the other later ensembles here continue to pour in with data that this system may try to find a weakness in the high pressure system as it slowly retreats next week. That could be a big story as well with inland flooding freshwater rain here. So there you have it, there's the model data. We're looking right into the rest of the tropics and Vest 95 hugging the Yucatan Peninsula here. This thing, once it re gets off the peninsula here and emerges into the Gulf of Mexico, will likely move in the direction of Texas, gain some strength and could become our next tropical named storm here. Very active. We're tracking Isaac out here. Will be a threat to the Lesser Antilles. Probably a strong tropical storm once it does 65, 70 mile per hour winds. And then it'll slowly weaken as it heads into the rest of the Caribbean here, just south of Jamaica, ingesting some drier air and some wind shear and some dust from Africa out here. There's still a little bit of dust in here. And Helene, Helene out here, you'll wanna watch it in the Azores, could target the Azores as either a strong tropical storm or a weak category one hurricane. So if you're in the Azores, this might be something you might wanna watch. Rest of the tropics, the pattern, I'm gonna take a look here at hurricane warnings and watches here. 
hurricane warnings here along the Outer Banks, along pretty much the whole North Carolina, South Carolina coastline here, into portions of mostly this whole region here. This is not very good. Um, storm surge, here is the storm surge data here that we have. Some of these areas where the channeling does occur, up to 15 to 25 feet of storm surge, locally higher where that channeling does occur. And it, since this could be coming in at some weird angles, and if this does hug the coast, whether it's moving you know, southwest or northwest or northeast along the coast, this could be very problematic to our storm surge forecast. So the, all in all, this is a real nightmare of a storm to deal with here along the coastline and even inland, so to speak. So there you have it. Uh, the rest of the tropics, we're dealing with those triple barrel high pressure systems. Here is all of the features. There's that invest system likely becoming a tropical system. And we ride these systems across the Atlantic. It's these high pressure systems that keep all of these systems westerly, west northwesterly, or northwesterly, traveling around the outer periphery. Jetstream continues to stay well up in the Great Lakes and into southern Canada. So it doesn't really have a chance to pick up any of these tropical systems and move them and recurve them. So there you have it. More bad news here in the tropics. We'll continue to remain extremely active, so to speak, here. So let's take a look at the rainfall totals here. Your eyes are pretty much drawn to North Carolina. Well, we'll likely see 20, maybe 30 inches of rain here, even up into portions of Virginia. And then either inland here further towards the Appalachians or even up into my forecast area in Pennsylvania, New York State, where the Susquehanna River Valley is. You'll want to stay tuned next week because this could be a serious problem for us, so to speak. There you have the pattern. As I said, pattern will not change. That ridge remains well entrenched, keeping those systems moving around the periphery of these subtropical highs. Let's get right into this severe what I'm going to call a flood map here. Let me stand over here because the Susquehanna River Valley next week, from Harrisburg, Lancaster, up to Wilkesbury, Scranton, Binghamton, New York. This is the area that I'm watching. If Florence decides to move up this direction, this would be the most vulnerable area, to, so to speak, here as the dynamics really get going if the system were to continue to move northwest, eventually north, and then northeast up the Appalachians here. So next week, right in the September 17th, 18th, 19th time frame, stay tuned because this could be a disaster inland as well. Let's take a look at the forecast. For my forecast area, starting off with the midpoint of your week, Wednesday, dealing with that stalled frontal boundary here to the east and the southeast. Scattered showers and thunderstorms develop mainly between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. But some areas will stay, we'll get those breaks of sunshine. Temperatures heading up towards the upper 70s, lower 80s into the Thursday. We push the frontal boundary a little bit further to the south towards the Mason-Dixon line here. Showers and thunderstorms continue to develop, 20 to 30% chance most areas. Temperatures rising to near 80, upper 70s here in upstate New York and northern New England and along the New York State Thruway. We'll start to get some warm spots over here towards the Great Lakes, Buffalo, Rochester, and into London and Toronto into your Friday. Look at this, TGIF. Still a chance of showers and thunderstorms from the New York State Thruway on southward here. We're dealing with temperatures warming up along the coastal plain here and even inland, especially towards Lake Ontario, getting into the 80s into your Saturday. This will probably be your best day across the northeast. Sunshine, wall-to-wall -wall breaking out. We only have a stray shower or thunderstorm possible from the PA Turnpike on southward. We may get a little bit of more creeping northward here, but that's about it. And let's take a look at the five-day outlook for my hometown viewers. Take a look at this from your Wednesday into your weekend. Look at that. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, scattered showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Temperatures heading up towards 80 towards the weekend. Beautiful sunny skies here, to say the least. So get out there and enjoy. Don't forget to like me on Facebook, MediaMark. Subscribe to me on YouTube at MediaMark.com, Twitter, WS Northeastern, and MediaMark.com and WeatherNortheastern.com. That'll do it for this edition of Weather Northeastern.